Yo, what's good, everybody? It's me, Don Weeb here, back with part four for What If Asta Was in Fairy Tale. If you guys want more of this series to come, then make sure to hit the like button, comment down below what you think of this part, as well as subscribe to the channel for more. We are almost at 6,000 subscribers here on YouTube, and also we have a Discord server, so if you want, you can join that. And I have a Twitter page and a second channel and stuff, but anyway, let's just get right into this part. Now, let's get started. <laughs> About a week has passed since Asta, Natsu, Urza, and Grey, along with Lucy, had finally completed their first ever mission as the strongest team to finally defeat Lullaby, as well as the Dark Guild Eisenwald, who had been trying to attain the power of the Dark Wizard Zareph. Urza! Natsu would shout out as he rushes towards her with his fist covered with flame. Fire! Dragon! Iron Fist! Just as Natsu would throw his first punch as he tries to attack Urza, suddenly the crowd would disperse, as the Magic Council's enforcement troop had arrived. We're here for someone called Urza Scarlet, to arrest you for the charges against you that from the destruction that had taken place in Clover. Asta and Grey, who had been watching Urza and Natsu's fight, including Natsu himself, would all three of them be incredibly surprised that Urza would be the one to take the fall for the destruction that had occurred in Clover. Asta, along with Natsu, had both shot out immediately that it had been Eisenwald's fault, that Dark Guild had been the one to cause all the destruction. They were just taking care of the problem. What were they supposed to do, just let Lullaby roam free and kill all the Guildmasters? The Magic Council wouldn't hear of it, though, as they needed someone to blame for all the accidents that had taken place there, and Urza was just the perfect scapegoat. Urza would tell everyone to calm down and that she'd be back probably in a few days, as she goes off to the Magic Council. Natsu would be infuriated, as Asta would be confused as to why Urza would be put to blame for this. Natsu would then pull his scheme with Macau, where Master Makarov would keep Macau inside of the jar while Natsu would escape. As Asta would notice that Natsu escapes, he'd run after him asking him where he's going. Asta would then get a grin towards him as Natsu would turn around and say that he's going to go get Urza himself, and he asked Asta if he wants to come with him. Asta would grin as he says, of course, as he would then rush in to help Natsu with his plan. As Natsu and Asta are devising a plan on the way there, we see Urza finally come into contact with Seagrain. Seagrain and Urza's contact would be the same in the original, with Urza being immensely uncomfortable with the Jalal lookalike. With Natsu and Asta finally arriving at the Magic Council together, Natsu would be the one to be the fake Urza, as well as Natsu being much taller than Asta. Asta would help Natsu get into his outfit, as he gives him the thumbs up and telling him he's all ready to go as he opens the door, telling Natsu to rush in. Not realizing that Urza had already made it there first, Natsu would come charging in just like he did in the original, with Urza face palming as the entire Magic Council is sitting there as a sweat drop falls the side, down the side of their face. This is when Natsu and Urza are put into custody after that little stun he pulled. Asta would whistle as he pretends to walk away, sit, telling Natsu would come after him later. Later that night, before they'd be released that morning, Asta would be the first one waiting outside as he asked the guards if he can go see his friends before they're released. He would go into the jail room and see that Urza and Natsu were there as he greets them. Urza would ask what he's doing there and Asta would say he'd come to get his two friends out. As soon as the gates would be open, they'd finally make it back to Fairy Tale, with Master Makarov being extremely angry, as well as hitting Natsu on the head, along with Asta for going with such a stupid plan. Soon after Natsu, Urza, as well as Asa's return from their prison hall, the guild had been now visited by a mysterious wizard. This man would be called Mistigan, as as soon as he walks in, he'd begin to use his magic to make everyone fall asleep. This would affect everyone, of course, except for Master Makarov and Asta, as Master Makarov is strong enough to negate Mistigan's magic on him, while Asta himself has so much anti-magic built up inside his body that magic that inadvertently affects him wouldn't really do much to his body overall, so he doesn't feel the least bit tired. Mistigan would be surprised that he can submit this, as he's already seen Makarov before. Mistigan would avert Asta's as Asta is asking what's going on, Makarov, with his eyes closed, would tell Asta to keep his eyes down to the ground, as Mistigan prefers to not be seen by anyone. 
As Mistigan walks into the room itself, he would take one of the missions as he then greets Master Makarov and says goodbye to him. As almost immediately as soon as Mistigan leaves the guild hall, everyone would wake up, with Asta wondering still what's going on. Makarov would explain that was Mistigan entering again, with Urza rubbing her head saying that was annoying and asking why he always has to use sleep magic. Asta, who'd only recently developed his anti-magic abilities from what we know when he went and stole that secret mission before, wouldn't have known that Mistigan would do this as he would have been one to fall asleep too before his ant natural anti-magic had begun to grow in his body. As Asta had no magic to begin with, as soon as he had gained the anti-magic demon, he'd immediately become accustomed to it, almost. Anyway, Asta, as well as the rest of the teams, would get back to normal, and everything would go pretty much normal for a few weeks. As suddenly Loctis would have returned to the guild, he'd make fun of Natsu, as well as Asta, saying that it's too bad that Asta has no magic, or he could probably beat Natsu on his own. Natsu would be pissed off at Loxus just like he was in the original, as Loxus th tells him he should come up there himself if he wants to fight him. As soon as he begins to try and walk up the stairs, Makarov would stop him, explaining that the second floor of the guild hall is only stated for those with permission to enter the floor. Asta, on the other hand, who'd usually been pretty bummed out whenever Loxus would make fun of him for this, would smile as his eyes light up, staring at Loxus, who's always been like a big brother to him because Makarov had raised him himself. Asta would say that to Loxus that he's actually developed a power of his own, as he holds his hand out, showing the five-leaf clover that's on his hand. What's that? Some sort of mark? Did you rub in the dirt or something, Loxus would say? Asta would smile as he then says, watch this. He'd hold his hand out as he holds his other hand there. As he grabs his hand around the area where the mark is, the metal blade would begin to pull out as Loxus is shocked. Immediately, Asta would whip the entire demon slayer sword out of his hand as he shows the ginormous black metal blade to Loxus. What the heck? What's going on with that sword? What? Loxus would be shocked as he's never seen this type of we weapon before ever created. Is that a Bane Particle sword? Loxus would ask, actually intrigued as he's never seen a weapon of the make before, as Bane Particles were so chaotic it was almost impossible to ever keep them in one shape. Natsu would smile as he says that he's gained his own power, as he then tells Natsu to fire off at him. Natsu would s tell Loxus that he's really got him fired up, as Natsu would belch an entire flame dragon roar towards Asta. Now watch this. Suddenly, Asta would grab both sides of the blade as he cuts the flame in half, sending it flying out the fairy tale door as it disperses. It can negate magic. Interesting, Loxus would s say, as he smirks, saying that maybe Asta isn't as useless as he thought. Asta would put the blade back into his hand, smirking. Malkarov would sigh as he tells Natsu that even if he wanted to, if he wanted to be like Asta and steal an S-Class mission, then he'd have to get up to the second floor, which he will not allow again. Natsu would be kind of bummed, as he said that it wasn't fair that Asta got to go on an S-Class mission while he didn't. Asta would smile, saying that's just how great he is, as he looks up with his eyes full of stars, saying that he's going to become a great wizard. Loxus would laugh as he walks back in onto the second floor to go sit down with the rest of the Thunder Legion, who would be naturally with him. This is when Mirajan would tell Natsu to cheer up and that there's plenty of other missions to go on. Happy, who would fly up to the second floor without anyone's notice, would grab one of those S-Class missions that he thought would be interesting. Later that night, Natsu would meet up at Lucy's house as she says, and as he asks her if she wants to go on a mission with him. He'd pull out the S-Class Fire, the S-Class mission that would say that they need to get rid of some demons at Galuna Island. G galuna Island? Isn't that supposed to, supposed to be haunted? Lucy would say, as she heard stories of it at Harjian. Natsu would smile as he says, yep, and they're going to go do the mission together. Lucy would be nervous, but eventually Natsu would convince her into helping him out on this mission by saying to look at the reward closer. Lucy would look down and she notices that the reward is a heck of a lot of jewel, as well as one of the 12 zodiac keys. She'd be smi smirking as she says, nice, as she then picks up the flyer and asks when they're ready to go. He would, Natsu would smile as he says they got one more thing to do first, as he'd grab Lucy as they run out of her apartment, heading towards the east side of town. There they'd find a small, small house similar to what Natsu and Happy live in. This would be where Asta would be living, after Makarov had wait, raised him to the point where he thought he could live on his own. As they knock on the door, they won't hear anyone, as Natsu would bust down the door as he usually would, and walks inside. Asta's place is actually quite clean, as Asta is much different from Natsu and happy in the fact in the original Black Clover he was much more organized from his personality point as well, if you've ever seen his room in the Black Bull's house. 
As they walk inside, Asta would wake up as he gets out of his hammock and asks what's going on. As he falls out of his hammock bed th sheet thing, he would look up around as he sees that they're inside his house and ask what Nats is doing there, as it's really late. Nats would hold up the flyer and ask if he wants to go on another S-Class mission, and he could use his help, as apparently in order to get rid of this curse, they might need some of his anti-magic power. Asta would smile as he says that anything he can do to help it out would be awesome, as long as he gets some jewel as well. Natsu would laugh, he says, let's get going, buddy, as Asta and Natsu would clap hands together as they then decide to rush out, along with Lucy and Happy following close behind. The next morning, they would be going upstairs as Mira Jane's investigating the second floor for cleaning, when she notices that one of the flyers are missing. As we now see in the morning, Natsu, Happy, Lucy, and Asta arrive at Harjian, the port, hoping to find a boat that they could use to take them to Galuna Island. As soon as Grey is notified, Mira Jane would tell Makarov about what's going on and how one of the flowers is missing. It must have been happy, she'd say, as Makarov would be pissed off saying that now that Natsu's gone on another mission, his first thought would be to ask Grey and Asta if they could go get him. Asta would be gone though, as Makarov would listen more, realizing that the mission they were, that Natsu was taking was to decurse this island, and that if he really wanted to do that, Natsu doesn't have any sort of power that could do that, but Asta does. Damn it, he convinced my poor boy to go along with him. As Makro says this, Mirajan would sweat saying that Asta did take a mission on his own before. As this, at this point, Makro would fall over saying, that's enough, as he then would call Grey up and tell him about the situation. Grey would volunteer to go and take them back before Urza would hear about it, which would be bad news to all three, him, Natsu, and Asta. Grey would head out immediately, as he would then find that they're all still at Harjian Port. As soon as he sees them, he'd run up and grab Natsu from behind, telling him if he really convinced Asta to go up with them, then if he really wanted to go, he should have at least told him first. As Grey takes them, tries to take them back with him, he would mention what Urz would do to them if they don't come back. Natsu still wants to continue, however, and tells Grey that he's almost ready, and he'll fight Grey if they need to. Suddenly, a sailor would come by, as he sees that Grey and Natsu are fighting. He would ask where they were two going, as Natsu would knock out Grey quickly with a sucker punch, telling him that he needs to, him to take him to Galuna Island. The sailor would agree, saying that he's ready to go, and they would all take Grey along with them as Asta, Natsu, and Lucy would get to, on the boat to go to the island. And as they head off, they'd take Grey with them so that he couldn't go and tell Urza about it, so she wouldn't come chasing after them. After a while, Grey would wake up, now conscious, as he has ropes tied around him. The sailor would be walking along as Lucy would ask what's going on and why he agreed to take them with him. Asta would be curious about this as well. He would introduce himself as his name is Bobo, and he'd reveal that he was actually one of the people who used to live on this island. Bobo would then take out his arm and show him that it's demonic, as he then asks if they're really serious about doing this mission. Back at the island's summit, we then see a ritual is taking place. We see moon drip, the purple liquid coming from the moon's sky, leaking down into some sort of icy structure below. As the team spots the island, they then look around to tell the Bobo that it's there, when Bobo suddenly disappears, and without anyone there, they're swept away into the waves. Asu would try to do his best to use his sword to block some of the waves, and Natsu and Grey would be doing their best as well, with Lucy trying to defend them, with maybe Aquarius' help. However, they are then sent to the village as their boat crashes. They decide to continue their quest after washing up, and they arrive at the village by nightfall. As they find the village that had posted the, the request, the village chief and the villagers would thank them, as Asta would say it's no big deal. As he then begin, they begin to show their problem, as they begin to reveal their true forms, as their physical deformities akin to that of what had occurred to Bobo, the f person from earlier. As Bobo would have showed him his demon arm, they would all become full demons. The chief, named Mocha, would then say the curse had began once the moon had turned this odd shit of purple a few years ago. Asta would wonder what that's going on when Natsu would tell Asta to go destroy the moon, as they'd said. Asta would sweat, asking if he really thinks that he can do that, with Natsu cheering around and telling him to do his best. Grey would tell Natsu that's a dumb idea, he says they should rest for the night and then go explore the island in the morning. As they would do so, greeting and saying goodbye to the villagers after that night, they would notice a strange temple that is up top on, near the mountain. As they rush towards this suddenly strange pyramid-like structure on the mountain of this island, they would notice a gigantic rodent. However, Grey would easily defeat it with his ice magic. Afterwards, they would happen upon the temple and they'd investigate it more. 
Once they were inside, Natsu would accidentally destroy the floor as he did in the original, and they would tumble into the hidden ca cave underneath the temple. As they explore into the cave further, they would then find some sort of huge ice structure. What the? Natsu would wonder. As soon as Grey and Ostasius, their mouths would be shocked open, with Grey beginning to shake. Inside, we see a demon. Grey would be visibly shaken as he recognizes this demon, Deliora. Before he can say anything further, they hear someone coming from behind, as Natsu, Asta, Grey, and Lucy, along with Happy, would dive behind the rocks. With Asta being forced back by Grey, saying he can't take himself anywhere near that ice, as it's, ma it's magical ice, and if Asta even touched it, he could probably melt it, thus causing Deliora to be released, which would be the worst thing possible thing to happen. He would say as his eyes look hollow. After these strange people had left after seeing that no one was there, they declared that they would destroy all the intruders, and they would mention the mysterious ritual known as the Moon Drip. As, after the trio leaves, Grey would explain about Deluar and his past, with Ur being the, his mentor at the cost of her own life sealing it, and that's why he tells he told Asa he can't go anywhere near that ice. Asa would nod, saying he wouldn't do anything to hurt a friend. They would decide to wait, as nightfall would come again. Suddenly, a purple light would fall on Deliora as some of the ice of the ice shell began to melt. What the? Grey would think, as he says they have to rush to the top to see what's going on. Suddenly, all of them would rush out of the temple as they'd run up to see what's going on at the top, seeing that there's this, a ritual going on with this purple light that's becoming some sort of liquid touching Deliora's ice. They would hear someone mention the Cold Emperor as they see someone in a mask along with a white robe. As they would then see this masked man, Natsu would jump out and say he's ready to fight as he challenges all the Cold Emperor's subordinates. However, the Cold Emperor would re refuse them as he ignores them and tells them to continue with what they were doing. Grey would then suddenly attack this man with his ice, only to be countered by this man's own ice, as the ice magic that hits Grey's would know that they know each other. His name is Leon. When Leon's all of his subordinates leave, Natsu would attempt to stop Leon's subordinates from escaping, but Leon would freeze him as Natsu is unable to escape the ice magic. Grey would attack with his ice more as Leon and Grey's battle begins. As Grey is about to get hit by one of Leon's moving ice attacks, with Leon saying that Grey is still inferior to him, Asa would move in front of the way, pulling his blade out and slashing the ice, hitting it with the side of his blade as it goes flying back towards Leon, hitting him. What the? He would think. This type of magic? No. It's something other than magic. Asta would look at him, his eyes full of red, telling Leon that he won't let him hurt Grey. After seeing what his master's sacrifice had done, how could anyone do that to dishonor her? As they then both have flashbacks of Grey and Leon seeing Ur, as they were both young boys training underneath her. Asta would then continue to fight with Grey against Leon, while Natsu would then eventually roll towards the village, as he would get back there. Suddenly, a ship would be coming towards them as Urza is on board, having heard about Grey not returning, as well as with the Rule Breakers having escaped to Galuna Island to try and complete this mission. As the battle continues going on, Leon's ice make magic with only one hand is mocking Grey, as Grey is getting twisted left and right, with Asta only being able to use his own defense and de 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 countering the magic and defending against it. Grey's past would be the thing that had led to Ur's death. And Leon's dream of having to one day surpass her can now only be realized if he can defeat the one thing that she could not, Deliora. Leon, who had been overwhelmed with guilt after seeing that Ur had died, Grey would feel an immense guilt himself, as he then had been overpowered by Leon and would be defeated, with Asta being taken so shortly after with an ice dragon, which would take Asta and Grey and send them flying down the mountain. Grey, are you alright? Asta would say as Grey is almost completely knocked out. Back to Natsu, we see Natsu having climbed on top of the temple to get a better view, as he finds Grey and Asta badly injured. Natsu would carry Grey and Asta as he picks them both up, trying to take them to the village, now that he knows where it is. As Asta would continue walking towards the village, Grey would realize that he has to fight Deliora is the same as Natsu taking the S-Class trial, and that in order for him to do this, he has no right to stop him. Natsu would get pissed off as he tells Grey that this is just Grey being insecure after and that he had taken a loss. And that doesn't mean he should give up because fairy tale wizards never give up. Grey would look up as he's now encouraged by and that by Natsu and has the will to push on. 
Asta would wake up slowly as well, telling Gray that he and him can take down Leon together, or probably on his own, as he tells Gray that there's no way that Leon's stronger than him. He's countered both of their magics before, and he knows that Gray's way stronger than that guy. Asta, as well as Natsu, would make it back to the village. We would see a giant rat fighting Lucy. Lucy's fight with Sherry would go on for a while, as Sherry uses her puppetry magic on Lucy's celestial spirits, controlling them and using her, them to fight back against her. However, their bond would cause Taurus, the celestial spirit that Lucy had summoned, to de-summon himself for Lucy so that she could not be harmed by him as part of his contract. As Lucy would be completely overpowering Sherry now, as Sherry is not able to con properly control her doll. With this, Lucy would activate the gate that she uses to summon Aquarius, with Aquarius defeating Sherry as well as Lucy. Happy would find Lucy, as she is then caught by Urza. Urza would find Lucy and Happy and ask where Natsu, Grey, and Asta were. Urza would demand where they are, and Lucy tries to plead, with Urza not hearing no for an answer and taking her and Happy into custody. As Urza would have taken them back to the village and tied them up, Grey and Natsu, along with Asta, would have also made it back to the village. As two new figures come out of the shadows, with Leon giving them instructions to help destroy the village. Asta would be with Natsu in the forest, as the two had run off together to go and see back at the temple if there was something they could do to stop the ritual. With now Natsu and Asta being standing there, they would see two figures emerging from the temple as they begin to walk towards the village. If you guys want to see the next part for what if Asta was in Fairy Tale, make sure to hit the like button, comment down below what you thought, and subscribe to the channel for more. I will see you guys later. Bye.